good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory Amen. to God. That Thank means so be it unto me. <laughs> Amen. So be it unto me. Glory to God. Well, I heard Brother John say that uh, he he wasn't perfect and he had faults. How many of you heard that this morning? I was shocked myself when I heard <laughs> When I heard him say that, but no, uh, everybody does. We all have issues, and uh, when we think we don't, then we're deceiving ourselves. We all have issues. Hallelujah. I want to, uh, I give Brother uh, Keith some scripture. Not sure which one I gave you first, but I want to go to the one in Psalms. Did I put that on the first on the list, honey? I want to go to Psalms first. Uh, 133, is that right? Verses 1 and 2, I think. I don't, might not go any further than that. But what I want to teach on this morning, and uh, I want you to pay close attention because I think it's one of the main things that needs to be taught in the body of Christ. And um, it's something that the devil uses to trip us up. Has the devil ever used anything to trip you up? Let me see your hand. Yes, I did. And uh, he's used all kinds of stuff. He's talked to you, sent all kinds of stuff, tried to get you to quit. Every reason in the world to stop, but he's never given you any reason to stay, has he? It's always about quitting, stopping, turning around. And uh, so I want us to look at what the scripture says. Then I'm going to make some comments. And I believe that if we will, and I'm going to say we, if we'll take what the Spirit is saying to us today, we'll leave here differently than when we came. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I like that word, uh, behold. Anytime you see that word behold in the Scripture, Brother Donald, it means look. Focus. Behold. Focus. How good. He, now look at Read it. It's not just like mono. Well, how good. And no, he's saying, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? Unity. Hallelujah. How many know that if the Bible says it's good to dwell together in unity, then it's a possibility that we can gather and not be in unity. Right, right. There's that possibility, right? Now look how the scripture puts it. What is what is it like when brethren draw together in unity? It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even to Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Think about that. That's a lot of oil. A lot of oil. Let's keep, let's, let's do a little bit more. Let's go on three. And the dew of Hermon, as does the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there, listen to, where? Where is the there he's talking about? When we gather together in unity is what he's talking about. Somebody say there. There, there is a place called there. And that there is unity. For there the Lord did what? commanded the blessing even life forevermore. Now the oil represents the anointing and he commanded the blessing where unity was. Commanded the blessing. Well this is what the Lord has given me this morning and I'm just going to give it to you as he, as he give it to me. I want to talk about the spirit of offense and um, I want us as Christians to watch out for the spirit of strife. Somebody say the spirit of strife. Spirit of strife. strife, and I don't have time. If I was going to teach on strife, it would take a long time to really put it out there the way it needs to be. Strife is a demon spirit. Listen, you don't play with a demon spirit. Strife is a demon spirit, and what is a demon spirit sent there to do? What did Jesus say Satan come to do? The thief comes to what? All right. Steal, kill, and destroy. So a demon spirit that's sent from hell to stir up things comes for those reasons. Steal, kill, and destroy. But here's the here's truth. That's what he come for, but he cannot do it without our cooperation. Yeah. You've got to cooperate. 
And we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. And I'm not telling you to keep your eyes on a demon spirit. I'm telling you to keep your eyes on Jesus. I want you to get that straight. You're keeping your eyes on Jesus. But as I keep my eyes on Jesus, Sister Linda, I'm not going to keep my eyes on you. Now, I'm going to watch out for a demon spirit. If there's something that comes up ugly in my life to come in my house, my home, I'm going to be aware of that. How many believe that we need to be aware if there's a thief somewhere around? Need to be aware. So I'm not going to just sit on ready watching the thief. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus, but I'm not going to be ignorant to the devil's devices. So I am going to realize that there is a spirit of strife sent from hell to destroy families, individual people, churches, government, our world. Look at our world today. So it is, it is more important that we are now in agreement with God. But what I found is we can't be in agreement with each other unless we are in agreement with God in the right way. We need to be in agreement with God and each other and not get hung up. I feel this real strong. So I'm going to tell you how strong I feel it this morning. I'm not willing to spend whatever time I have left on this earth hung up with some demon spirit of strife, having quarrels and arguments about stupid stuff. Is anybody in the house? You, you're not my, you might not be my age or fixing to be my age, but you're going to have to get sick and tired of some stuff before you put a stop to it. And you don't need to let the devil talk to you, whisper in your ear. You don't need to listen to whispering. You don't need to listen to gossip. You don't need to be the spreader of gossip because the Bible speaks against it so emphatically that we cannot ignore it, Brother Kenneth. We cannot ignore it. Uh, strife can be, I want us to go to James, uh, let's do four and one. Strife can be just a undercurrent. Have you ever been around somebody and there was just an angry undercurrent? They wasn't maybe saying nothing in your presence, but you kind of felt it. You kind of felt like there was some angry words. Now, the scripture, we're going to go to the Word, and we're going to take what the Word says. And the reason I believe God is having us do this is Wings of Love Ministry, as well as every other church and every other Christian, we have a mission. And we're not going to complete the mission if we get into strife. Don't you listen to me. The devil's going to try to keep you from here. He's going to get you on something else, get you on lunch or whatever. He, he's going to try to keep you from completing your mission of spreading the word. And he'll win if you don't do something about it. If you're like, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, the Bible says, and that's what we're going to... Where does this stuff come from? Where does all this stuff come from? From whence come wars and fightings among you? Who is he talking to? Is James talking to a sinner or is he talking to saints? He's talking to saints. Somebody say, he's talking to me. If you're born again, he's talking to you. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you? In other words, do you know where it comes from? Come they not hence, even of your own lust, that war in your members. Where does it come from? The devil can't do something, but there's not something inside that we need to deal with. Could be, maybe you've got a jealousy problem. Come on, you can be insecure, you can have a jealousy problem, you can have a lot of stuff. And I've heard some people say, well, I'll tell you what, Brother Keith, you're the one that made me jealous. No, nobody has the ability to make me anything. I have the right and I have the responsibility to keep my thoughts on God and to guard my own heart and my mind. And so no one has the ability People speak wrong uh, uh, and whisper behind each other's back. And I'm so, you say, well, there anybody here that does that? I'd be shocked if they wasn't. Up in a crowd of more than two, I'd be shocked. That's why the Lord is telling us this. There's a reason. There's a pretty strong statement um, that I want you to go to James 3.16. It's a, a, a pretty strong statement. For where envying, or that's jealousy, where envying and strife is, where that spirit is, there is what? Every evil word. What do you have before every evil confusion. word? Confusion. You got confusion. confusion. Somebody say confusion. 
when I see a lot of confusion, I know there's a demon spirit somewhere. Envying and strife, there's confusion. And along with that, when you say every evil work, and I'm going to tell you, when you say that, that's strong. That's strong right there. We as Christians, again, have a purpose and a mission. And my purpose for being here is, is not just to be seen and heard, but I have a purpose to spread the gospel. And I'm just going to tell you, come hell or high water, I'm going to do that. Now, in order to do that, i got to watch my heart. i got to watch my mind. i got to watch my thoughts. I have to keep my eyes on Jesus. And if something is coming up that I feel, when, when you've been saved a little while, you ought to be able to feel something coming up that's not godly at you. Right. That's trying to get you stirred up into something. My mother was an excellent example, Brother Tommy, about this. She didn't listen to gossip. She did not listen to anybody say anything negative about anybody. I know because I was right there with her. And if somebody come up to say something about somebody, you know what she'd say? She'd say, shh, we need to pray about that. Did she know something about strife? I believe she did. I believe she did. Now, I want you to go to Hebrews 11 and 6. And I want you to, Lord connected something with me that I have been teaching and preaching for a long time. He gave me another twist on it. And I want us to look at it. But without faith, it is what? Impossible. Impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, when it's without faith, the word that's used here, without faith, is C-H-O-R-I-S. The Greek word means without, as being outside. Remember we talked about this, Brother Jerry. Outside of a particular place. Right. A place of faith, outside a particular place. Now this is what the Lord has, has brought to me and shown me, and I want you to listen to it. It'll help you. That place of faith is where your specific assignment is. Come on. It's your specific assignment which changes the meaning of the scripture and says, for without faith or being outside of your specific assignment, it says God cannot be pleased on that because you're trying to do something you're not called to do. Come on. Being outside of your specific assignment. I tried to be an usher at Wings of Love. Uh, at one time, I was trying to be an usher. When I couldn't find one in the church, I decided I'm going to be an usher. Well, I'm not anointed for that. Well, I, I worked with the young people. I did okay, but that wasn't somewhere that God wanted me just the whole time. I worked in children's church, but that wasn't exactly where I needed to be. I filled in. But God had a specific place for me, and where I am right now, is that specific place. Right. Come on, a specific calling. Right. And everybody's called to win people to the Lord, but not everybody is called to teach. So you need to recognize if you are called to teach, you need to recognize the age group you're called to teach. But what the devil wants to do is get you all stirred up in something that don't amount to a hill of beans, and you're going to miss that place where God called you. Do you know people leave churches because they get upset or they get jealous of somebody else or whatever? They even get bothered if somebody takes their seat in the church. Uh, years ago, people would donate pews to the church, and they would have their family name on the pew. And if somebody was sitting on the pew that they donated that had their family's name on it, people would freak out. Come on. Is, is that something that matters or doesn't matter? Come on, it, it doesn't matter. But without faith or without being in a specific place, you say, what do you mean I'm not going to be pleasing to God? No, that's not what I mean. When I say God is not pleased, it means this. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. When you were born, God stamped you with certain gifts and certain callings and he's not going to change it just because you don't want to do that job. Can I get an amen? He's not going to change it. Well, I just uh, uh, I just want to do that job over there. Yeah, but I want you. I called you to do this job. 
So you need to get in that place of faith or that place where he called you. Somebody say, my place. My place. That's where my anointing is. My anointing is. Amen. And I do not need to get stirred up with other stuff, with strife, with gossiping, with jealousy, because it's going, here's what's going to happen. It's going to get you out of your place. And if you get out of your place, you're not going to be able to fulfill your destiny. That's just the way it is. I don't think, uh, Brother Kenneth, we understand how strong offense is. The spirit of offense. What it, what it actually can do. But it can stop you dead in your tracks. You, somebody say, Sister Janice, how do you know that? Come on. How do you think I know that? I know that because I've been there. And I didn't go any further. I got stuck. Here's what, uh, Brother John, you can't do. You can't just pick an assignment and please God. You don't just pick an assignment and say, God, here's what I want to do. Go ahead and bless me. You don't decide what you do. God decides what you do. Somebody say, I'm bought with a price. I don't just pick and choose my assignment. If God tells you to do a particular thing, then you need to do what he tells you to do. If he tells you that, and you're not, he's not going to be pleased with you doing all this other stuff that he didn't call you to do. Let me give you an idea. Uh, my mother, I tried to get out of doing some things my mother wanted me to do. And one of the things she wanted me to do, we lived three doors down from the church, uh, Brother Donald, and she wanted me to be in Sunday school. She wanted me to be there. She wanted me to be in church after Sunday school. Well, I didn't want to do both of them. So what I would do is I would go to Sunday school, and one day I decided, since we lived three doors down from the church, that I would go home after Sunday school and skip church. Uh -oh. Now, I knew what Mother wanted me to do. It was clear. I knew she wanted me to be at both. She, Mama made that very clear. So then uh, Sister Wanda got thinking about that. Mama wasn't going to be happy when she got home with me sitting at the house. So I figured that I better do something to try to ease it up. So I come up with this plan that I would cook lunch for everybody. And when Mother got home from church, she would see the lunch. That's what I thought. But anyway, uh, when she come in, I'm like, Mama, look at what I did. Look at, look at all the stuff that I did. And my mother viewed it. She looked over it. She looked there at me. She said, you know what? This is a great lunch that you prepared. But I'll never forget what she said. She said, if you had really wanted to please me, you would have stayed in church. I appreciate the fact that you want to do something, but that's not exactly what I wanted you to do. Now, this is what's important. We do not need to get sidetracked with things that don't matter. Don't try to play catch up. If God is speaking to you about doing a particular thing and you know it's God, you need to stick with it. Another thing you need to stick with the fact that the Bible gives us uh, specific information that we need to walk in love toward the brethren. We need to love each other. When you go and read the, the love chapter in the Bible, which is all the way through from God loving us from Genesis to Revelation, but you read what the Bible says about love, love is not envious. Love is not selfish. Love does not uh, try to get its own way all the time. It's not easily provoked. It's not puffed up. In fact, one translation of that says this. Love barely notices when other people do wrong. Now, I want you to look at me and let me ask you a question. How well do you notice when other people do wrong? Are you noticing that way too much? Because the Bible says love doesn't notice that. True love, the agape love, is not focused on what people do wrong. So what causes judgment? Well, when you say judgmental, if you're being judgmental, that means it's coming from where? The mind. You're making a judgment 
that you don't have any right to make because, uh, Brother Donald, I don't know the heart of every man. I don't have a right to jump in there and judge what somebody's doing or not doing. The best thing that we can do is to pray. Somebody say pray. pray. And quick. We need to pray. I want to talk about gossip because I think that, that this is something people take lightly. How many of you think that people take that way too lightly? They'll say this, say that. Well, did you hear this? Did you hear that? Uh, in the area of gossip because I realize that, that um, how it connects with offense and, and unforgiveness and hurt feelings and everything else. But the scripture says, and how many of you know we go by scripture here? Lift up your hand and say, we're Bible people around here. The scripture says, now I wanna, I'm, gonna, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm giving you a warning of what the devil will get you all caught up in if you let him. You say, well, if somebody comes up to tell me something or to gossip or say something, I'm going to be rude if I don't walk away. Who, who do you want to please? God or that other person sitting in front of you? See, this is what's important. We need to shut down some things. And all due respect, we need to give sometimes a soft rebuke when somebody's saying or do something against a brother. Gossip, the scripture says, that gossip is worse than murder. Are you aware of that? That gossip is worse than murder because when you commit murder, it only happens one time. But when you gossip, every time that's repeated over and over again, it's like killing that person over and over again. Do we understand that? Let's go to Proverbs 6, 16. And we're going to look at some things um, as, as much time as we have. It says, These six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to uh, running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Did it or did it not say these things God hates? Now, there's seven abominations here. Seven. And God hates all seven. Somebody say he hates all seven. But what if I show you another scripture that lets you know what is worse? Let's go to Proverbs 26 and 25. Mark these down. When he speaketh fair, believeth him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Now, hold that. Just hold that thought. No, just that right there. There are seven. Somebody say seven. seven. Abominations in his heart. Here's what it means. It says there are seven abominations are in the heart of a gossip. All the seven things that God hates are in the heart of a gossiper. Which elevates gossip above all the others. Now, let's get quiet. Won't you listen? Gossip is character assassination. And every time it's repeated, it is like killing that person over and over and over again. So in light of this, this scripture that I just read, in light of this scripture, we definitely need to refuse to participate in gossip. Would you say yes? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Anything. Now, I know this is, uh, people are always saying, I got people in a box. <laughs> Actually, I got a key to get us out. And it's the word. I'm not going to tell you I've never repeated something that was said to me, but I'm going to tell you every time I did in my life, it left a nasty taste in my mouth. Are you listening? Are you with me? Anything. Somebody say anything. Let's say it together. Anything. That you have to whisper about someone. Anything you have to whisper about someone is a clear sign that it's something you shouldn't say at all. 
Amen. I got an amen. 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 If I have to whisper, and I've had people whisper, I've done some whispering too. The Bible talks about whispering. Go back to, uh, I'm going to not go back to the scripture, but I'm going to comment it. When we started in Psalms 133, it says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. That means unity is extremely important. Here we see unity, the anointing, and blessing. There is obviously a connection here. Here we see why the enemy seeks to start and cause strife, perpetuate strife and fighting, and cause uh, people to get into arguments. And what he is trying to do, and I've heard Brother Jerry say this over and over again, whether he was preaching on this subject or not, I don't know. But he said Satan's uh, strategy is divide and conquer. You know, that's why uh, a lot of churches never get anywhere, because they divide and conquer. Somebody gets upset. Uh, uh, somebody, well, they, they took my place. They, they played an instrument. I heard one preacher say, if I was playing an instrument and somebody come in and they could play it, I didn't have no problem with it. Uh, but some people have problem with it, just like sitting in their place. Um, you would be surprised. All the things, but the main thing it is, he, when we go back to James, he said, what causes all this? Something inside of us that needs help. Some healing inside of us that needs help. That's what the devil uses. He uses your own insecurity, your own situations in your life, and then he turns them around and he tries to destroy, steal, kill, and destroy your life with your own situations that Jesus said he'd come to heal and set us free from. Glory to God. Somebody says amen. Jesus said... A house that's divided against itself. What did Jesus say? Somebody help me. It won't stand. He said it won't stand if it's divided against itself. A nation, a church, any entity, a business. Uh, businesses has been taken back down by gossip and strife. I've been on jobs where the people that the subs that was on the job was talking about the builder that was providing them that work. Right, right, yeah. That builder provided them work to be there on that job and they had the audacity to say something about somebody that had provided work for their family for years. And then, you know what happens when they say that? They put that thought in somebody else's head. And then that person repeats it, and they try to assassinate the character. In fact, let me give you an idea. There's one particular thing that happened in our life, and somebody come up to Brother Jerry and said, yeah, I heard about that uh, particular person you work for. Boy, they're this and they're that. And they started saying all these things that this person was, and Brother Jerry said, somebody misinformed you. They're not like that at all. Man of character. Are you? He said, he's not like that. You're, this is a man that has character. This is a man that has substance. And this is a man that's caring. And you're talking about him as if he don't have any character at all. And that's what happens. They assassinate it. And every time it's repeated, they kill, kill, kill. That's what the devil's out to. And you and I need to be smarter than that. I'm just going to say it. I need to be smarter than that. Come on. I don't need to be saying anything bad. My, your mother told you, if you had a decent mother, this is what she said to you. Come on, what? You ain't got nothing nice to say that don't say nothing at all. Come on. Preach it, baby. That's the way it is. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. If you can't say something nice about somebody, don't come up with something and say something. If somebody else is saying something uh, negative about somebody, don't join in. I don't care if you've seen them do it. If you've seen somebody do something wrong, have you think anybody's ever seen you do something wrong? Would you like for them to re record that and report that and, and then it go through over and over and over again and then they just meet Brother John and say, I heard Brother John was so-and-so and Brother John's not like that at all. Some people come up and say, I tell you what, that person right there, they're, they're stuck up. That person's really stuck up. 
And to come to find out, that person wasn't stuck up at all. But they kept on saying it. In fact, somebody uh, said something to somebody that I love one time, and they said, well, uh, they can't nobody get along with you. They didn't know that person. They didn't know whether he, they could be got along with or not, but they took the word of somebody else, and it got spreaded. It goes around, come on, goes around, and then people get the idea about things that's not true. Am I? Is the Lord helping us today with the scripture? Are you getting help today? Come on. On the day of Pentecost, what were they doing? They was in one place. Come on, what's this one? Come on. They was in this one mind and one accord, this one purpose. They were there to receive and usher in the Holy Ghost here on this earth. And when it was fully come, that's what they were sent there to do. And that's what they did. 120 out of 500 did anyway. But the ones that was there, they set themselves that we're going to be in agreement. This is what we're here for. On the day of Pentecost, they're one mind in one place, hallelujah, one accord. Now, if we could put aside the things that don't really matter, I want you to imagine something today. If we could put aside the things that don't really matter, and can I say to you there's a whole lot of that on the list. Put it, just cast that away, and cling to the things that do really matter, like the reason we're here. The reason we're here. I wonder what the church could accomplish. Wow. I wonder what the church could accomplish if we could put aside everything that didn't matter and only cling to what did matter. Do you know what matters to God? That we all come together. If we go to Psalms 133, he said, oh, how good and pleasant it is when we dwell in unity. Well, Sister Linda, if it's good and pleasant that we dwell in unity, that means it's bad and unpleasant when we're not in unity. I've been in a church uh, with 100 people at least, and there was so much strife going on and stuff going on around me that I'm thinking, whoa, you could feel it? God wanted to do great things, but people had their mind on everything else. They, they was into jealousy. They was into... Uh, why do you think the Bible talks about bickering and backbiting? He, he said, if you're going to uh, bite and chew and devour one another, make sure you're careful that you don't devour one another. And you say, Sister Janice, are you saying about anybody here? I'm talking to me and everybody in this place and anybody that sees it on Facebook. I'm saying it's a trick of the devil and you need to stay away from it. You need to stay in unity. We need to stay in love. We need to walk in love. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. And we need to stamp out stuff that God doesn't like. And he hates gossip. One of the saddest things, because people, they, they fall out with people. Have y'all ever talked about, have you ever had a relationship or a, a, a fellowship that was broken? Yes, falling out, people not talking to each other for years. You ever had that? I could tell you some things. As one song said, it would chill you to the bone if I was to tell you about some things that literally you'd be surprised. Mm. It's bad that it happens, and it's sad that it happens so often. And it happens in any church. Wings of Love is a wonderful church. But we're made up of people. And people is subject to demon spirits coming up and saying stuff if you don't guard your heart. And if you don't say, I'm not getting involved in nothing that's not good and lovely and right and doesn't produce good things, I'm not going to get into it. One of the saddest things in the ministry is, is when it's hindered it'll hinder individual growth and it will stop it, it can stop your destiny but it'll definitely delay it somebody was saying something here a while back and they was honest enough to say it and I, 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 I say praise God they was honest enough to say 
I have been caught up in offense. I've been offended, and it did slow me down and delay me. I would be further on down the road had I not got caught up in it. Come on. One definition of offense is a trap, we said, like a wild animal steps into and cannot release himself. Offense can also be described as off-ended. In other words, right now you're off track. You need to get back on track. Being detained can cause you to miss your purpose very costly. Brother Jerry, walking in the Spirit and being controlled by the Spirit will keep us walking in the love of God and it will literally keep a protective shield over us and it will keep us on track and we'll see the end of what God wanted to see in our life. When your purpose, and I'm going to say this as the last thing I think pretty much I'm going to say. Uh, when your purpose is in line with God's will and purpose, you will be willing to sacrifice some things for the sake of the furtherance of the gospel. What is the most, Paul said this, by inspiration of the Spirit, y'all help me if I misquote it. He said, some preach Christ for selfish gain. Other preach Christ for other reasons. But you know what he said, Brother John? Do you know what Paul's next statement was? I glory that Christ is being preached. I'm not going to sit and list all the people's names. Okay, this one ain't doing right and that one ain't doing right. If they're preaching Jesus... We need to hush, and we need to let it go. Oh, God, help them. Help them. They're preaching Jesus. Not find fault with them. It's easy to find fault. Man, that's, that's the easiest thing in the world there is to do is figure out what's wrong with somebody. But to look and find something right with somebody. And to say another thing, they're my brother. They're my brother in Christ. They're also your help in the ministry. And I believe God brought this to us for a reason this morning. How many of you believe you did? There are more important things. Now you listen to me careful. There are more important things than being heard, which everybody wants to be. I want to be heard. Being right. Being first. There's more important things. Two of them is this. It's more important to be willing and obedient than it is these other things. How many of you know from Scripture that we have been commissioned by the Lord to carry out the gospel? He said, go ye into all the world and do what? Preach the gospel. And how many creatures? Every creature. Every creature. He goes and gives us a commission at the end of, of uh, I think it's in the Mark. He said, we've been commissioned by the Lord to carry the gospel to the world. So I'm here on an assignment. Somebody say, I'm here on assignment. I'm not here by accident. Being willing and obedient. We have a mission. In 2024, we have a mission. More than ever before, God wants us to experience unity, good and pleasant. You know why he wants us to experience unity? For the key is because he wants us to experience more power, more peace, more love, more joy. He wants us to experience what Jesus said he'd come to give. Go to John 10 and 10. Somebody say, I needed this today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody say, well, I receive it today. Hallelujah. I'm receiving it. I'm taking it. Hallelujah. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, destroy. And he'll do it any way he can, any way you'll let him. Jesus said, I am come that they might what? Have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. You know how we have it more abundantly? We stay out of strife. We stay away from gossip. We walk by the love of God and set ourselves. I'm, I'm a forgiver. Hallelujah. I forgive you before you even decide to say anything against me. Somebody say that. 
Come on, even before an offense. You say, how can you do that? Jesus did. He forgave our past, present, and future sins. He said, I forgive you even before you get there and do it. Somebody lift your hand and say, I can do it. He put it in my heart to do it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I have the love of God inside of me, and it is spread abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. My intent is to walk in the love of God. Help me, Holy Spirit, not to get caught up in stupid stuff. Don't be caught up in stuff that don't matter, Father. Heal everything that needs healing. Everything in our emotion, everything in our mind, Father, so we can carry out the mission you put us here to do and that we have your purpose in mind. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you.